A Christian mission is an organized effort to spread Christianity. Missions often involve sending individuals and groups, called missionaries, across boundaries, most commonly geographical boundaries, for the purpose of proselytism conversion to Christianity, or from one Christian tradition to another. This involves evangelism preaching a set of beliefs for the purpose of conversion, and humanitarian work, especially among the poor and disadvantaged. There are a few different kinds of mission trips, short-term, long-term, relational and ones meant simply for helping people in need. Some might choose to dedicate their whole lives to missions as well. Missionaries have the authority to preach the Christian faith and sometimes to administer sacraments, and provide humanitarian work to improve Christian doctrines such as the doctrine of love professed by many missions permit the provision of aid without requiring religious conversion. History of Christian missions the earliest Christian mission, then, the Great Commission and Dispersion of the Apostles, was active within Second Temple Judaism. Whether a Jewish proselytism existed or not that would have served as a model for the early Christians is unclear. See Circumcision Controversy in Early Christianity Hashtag Jewish Background for details. Soon, the expansion of the Christian mission beyond Judaism to those who were not Jewish became a contested issue, notably at the Council of Jerusalem. The Apostle Paul was an early proponent of this expansion, and contextualized the Christian message for the Greek and Roman cultures, allowing it to reach beyond its Hebrew and Jewish roots. From late antiquity onward, much missionary activity was carried out by members of religious orders. Monasteries followed disciplines and supported missions, libraries, and practical research, all of which were perceived as works to reduce human misery and suffering and glorify the Christian God. For example, Nestorian communities evangelized parts of Central Asia, as well as Tibet, China, and India. Cistercians evangelized much of Northern Europe, as well as developing most of European agriculture's classic techniques. Saint Patrick evangelized many in Ireland. Saint David was active in Wales. During the Middle Ages, Ramon Lull c. 1232 c. 1315 advanced the concept of preaching to Muslims and converting them to Christianity by means of nonviolent argument. A vision for large-scale mission to Muslims would die with him, not to be revived until the 19th century. Additional events can be found at the timeline of Christian missions. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Medieval. Topic: during the Middle Ages Christian monasteries and missionaries such as St. Patrick, and Adalbert of Prague propagated learning and religion beyond the boundaries of the old Roman Empire. In the 7th century Gregory the Great sent missionaries, including Augustine of Canterbury, into England. The Hiberno-Scottish mission began in 563. In the late 13th and early 14th centuries, Franciscans such as William of Rubruck, John of Montcorvino, and Giovanni ed. Magnolia were sent as missionaries to the Near and Far East. Their travels took them as far as China in an attempt to convert the advancing Mongols, especially the great Khans of the Mongol Empire, also see medieval Roman Catholic missions in China. Topic. Catholic missions after 1492 Topic. One of the main goals of the Christopher Columbus expedition financed by Queen Isabella of Spain was to spread Christianity. During the Age of Discovery, Spain and Portugal established many missions in their American and Asian colonies. The most active orders were the Jesuits, Augustinians, Franciscans and Dominicans. The Portuguese sent missions into Africa. These are some of the most well-known missions in history. While some of these missions were associated with imperialism and oppression, others notably Matteo Ricci's Jesuit mission to China were relatively peaceful and focused on integration rather than cultural imperialism. In both Portugal and Spain, religion was an integral part of the state and evangelization was seen as having both secular and spiritual benefits. Wherever these powers attempted to expand their territories or influence, missionaries would soon follow. By the Treaty of Tordesillas, the two powers divided the world between them into exclusive spheres of influence, trade and colonization. The proselytization of Asia became linked to Portuguese colonial policy. Topic. Catholic missions in Asia Topic. 
Portuguese trade with Asia rapidly proved profitable from 1499 onwards, and as Jesuits arrived in India around 1540, the colonial government in Goa supported the mission with incentives for baptized Christians. Later, the church sent Jesuits to China 1552 onwards and to other countries in Asia. Topic. Protestant missions Topic. The Reformation unfolded in Europe in the early 16th century. For over a hundred years, occupied by their struggle with the Catholic Church, the early Protestant churches as a body were not strongly focused on missions to heathen lands. Instead, the focus was initially more on Christian lands in the hope to spread the Protestant faith, identifying the papacy with the Antichrist. In the centuries that followed, Protestant churches began sending out missionaries in increasing numbers, spreading the proclamation of the Christian message to previously unreached people. In North America, missionaries to the Native Americans included Jonathan Edwards (1703–1758), the well-known preacher of the Great Awakening (ca. 1731–1755), who in his later years retired from the very public life of his early career. He became a missionary to the Housatonic Native Americans (1751) and a staunch advocate for them against cultural imperialism. As European culture has been established in the midst of indigenous peoples, the cultural distance between Christians of differing cultures has been difficult to overcome. One early solution was the creation of segregated praying towns of Christian natives. This pattern of grudging acceptance of converts played out again later in Hawaii when missionaries from that same New England culture went there. In the course of the Spanish colonization of the Americas, the Catholic missionaries learned the languages of the Amerindians and devised writing systems for them. Then they preached to indigenous people in those languages Quechua, Guarani, Nahuatl instead of Spanish, to keep Indians away from sinful whites. An extreme case of segregation occurred in the Guarani Reductions, a theocratic semi-independent region established by the Jesuits in the region of the future Paraguay between the early 17th century and 1767. From 1732 onwards the Moravian Church began sending out missionaries. Around 1780, an indigent Baptist cobbler named William Carey began reading about James Cook's travels voyages in Polynesia. His interest grew to a furious sort of backwards homesickness, inspiring him to obtain Baptist orders, and eventually to write his famous 1792 pamphlet, An Enquiry into the Obligation of Christians to Use Means for the Conversion of Heathen. Far from a dry book of theology, Carey's work used the best available geographic and ethnographic data to map and count the number of people who had never heard the gospel. It inspired a movement that has grown with increasing speed from his day to the present. In the United States, the American Board of Commissioners for Foreign Missions ABCFM was chartered in 1812. Protestant missionaries from the Anglican and Lutheran and Presbyterian traditions starting arriving in what was then the Ottoman Empire in the first half of the 19th century. This eventually led to the creation of what are today the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Jordan and the Holy Land and the See of the Anglican Bishop in Jerusalem. Furthermore, it was during this time that the Christian and Missionary Alliance started their missionary activity in Jerusalem, American, hard-shell Baptists, anti-mission Baptists, or old-school Baptists. Adhering to strict Calvinist rejected all mission boards, Bible tract societies, and temperance societies as nonbiblical. The mainstream of the Baptist denomination, however, supported missionary work. Thomas Koch, 1747–1814 the first bishop of the American Methodists, was the father of Methodist missions. After spending time in the newly formed United States of America strengthening the infant Methodist church alongside Episcopal colleague Francis Asbury, the British-born Koch left for mission work. During his time in America, Koch worked vigorously to increase Methodist support of Christian missions and of raising up mission workers. Koch died while on a mission trip to India, but his legacy among Methodists, his passion for missions, continues. Topic. China Topic. A wave of missions, starting in the early 1850s, targeted inland areas, led by Hudson Taylor with his China Inland Mission 1865. 
Taylor was later supported by Henry Grattan Guinness (1835–1910), who founded (1883) Cliff College, which continues as of 2014 to train and equip for local and global mission. The missions inspired by Taylor and Guinness have collectively been called faith missions, and owe much to the ideas and example of Anthony Norris Groves (1795–1853). Taylor, a thoroughgoing nativist, offended the missionaries of his era by wearing Chinese clothing and speaking Chinese at home. His books, speaking, and examples led to the formation of numerous inland missions and of the Student Volunteer Movement SVM, founded in 1886, which from 1850 to about 1950 sent nearly 10,000 missionaries to inland areas, often at great personal sacrifice. Many early SVM missionaries traveling to areas with endemic tropical diseases left with their belongings packed in a coffin, aware that 80% of them would die within two years. <inaudible> <inaudible> British Empire in the 18th century, and even more so in the 19th century, missionaries based in Britain saw the empire as a fertile field for proselytizing for Christianity. All the main denominations were involved, including the Church of England, the Presbyterians of Scotland, and the Nonconformists. Much of the enthusiasm emerged from the Evangelical Revival. Within the Church of England, the Church Mission Society CMS originated in 1799 and went on to undertake activity all around the world, including in what became known as the Middle East. Before the American Revolution, Anglican and Methodist missionaries were active in the Thirteen Colonies. The Methodists, led by George Whitefield, were the most successful and after the Revolution an entirely distinct American Methodist denomination emerged that became the largest Protestant denomination in the new United States. A major problem for colonial officials was the demand of the Church of England to set up an American bishop, this was strongly opposed by most of the Americans had never happened. Increasingly colonial officials took a neutral position on religious matters, even in those colonies such as Virginia where the Church of England was officially established, but in practice controlled by laymen in the local vestries. After the Americans broke free, British officials decided to enhance the power and wealth of the Church of England in all the settler colonies, especially British North America Canada. Missionary societies funded their own operations that were not supervised or directed by the colonial office. Tensions emerged between the missionaries and the colonial officials. The latter feared that missionaries might stir up trouble or encourage the natives to challenge colonial authority. In general, colonial officials were much more comfortable with working with the established local leadership, including the native religions, rather than introducing the divisive force of Christianity. This proved especially troublesome in India, where very few local elites were attracted to Christianity. In Africa, especially, the missionaries made many converts. Of the 21st century, there were more Anglicans in Nigeria than in England. Missionaries increasingly came to focus on education, medical help, and long term modernization of the native personality to inculcate European middle class values. They established schools and medical clinics. Christian missionaries played a public role, especially in promoting sanitation and public health. Many were trained as physicians, or took special courses in public health and tropical medicine at Livingstone College, London. After 1870 By the 1870s Protestant missions around the world generally acknowledged the long-term material goal was the formation of independent, self-governing, self-supporting, self-propagating churches. The rise of nationalism in the Third World provoked challenges from critics who complained that the missionaries were teaching Western ways, and ignoring the indigenous culture. The Boxer Rebellion in China in 1898 involved very large-scale attacks on Christian missions and their converts. The First World War diverted resources, and pulled most Germans out of missionary work when that country lost its empire. The worldwide Great Depression of the 1930s was a major blow to funding mission activities. In 1910, the Edinburgh Missionary Conference was presided over by active SVM and YMCA leader and future Nobel Peace Prize recipient John R. Mott, an American Methodist layperson. The conference reviewed the state of evangelism, Bible translation, mobilization of church support, and the training of indigenous leadership. Looking to the future, conferees worked on strategies for worldwide evangelism and cooperation. 
The conference not only established greater ecumenical cooperation in missions, but also essentially launched the modern ecumenical movement. The next wave of missions was started by two missionaries, Cameron Townsend and Donald McGavran, around 1935. These men realized that although earlier missionaries had reached geographic areas, there were numerous ethnographic groups that were isolated by language, or class from the groups that missionaries had reached. Cameron formed Wycliffe Bible translators to translate the Bible into native languages. McGavran concentrated on finding bridges to cross the class and cultural barriers in places like India, which has upwards of 4,600 peoples, separated by a combination of language, culture, and caste. Despite democratic reforms, caste and class differences are still fundamental in many cultures. An equally important dimension of mission strategy is the indigenous method of nationals reaching their own people. In Asia this wave of missions was pioneered by men like Dr. G. D. James of Singapore, Rev. Theodore Williams of India and Dr. David Cho of Korea. The two-thirds missions movement, as it is referred to, is today a major force in missions. Most modern missionaries and missionary societies have repudiated cultural imperialism, and elected to focus on spreading the gospel and translating the Bible. Sometimes, missionaries have been vital in preserving and documenting the culture of the peoples among whom they live. Often, missionaries provide welfare and health services, as a good deed or to make friends with the locals. Thousands of schools, orphanages, and hospitals have been established by missions. One service provided by missionaries was the Each One, Teach One literacy program begun by Dr. Frank Laubach in the Philippines in 1935. The program has since spread around the world and brought literacy to the least enabled members of many societies. During this period missionaries, especially evangelical and Pentecostal missionaries, witnessed a substantial increase in the number of conversions of Muslims to Christianity. In an interview published in 2013 a leader of a key missionary agency focused on Muslims claimed that the world is living in a day of salvation for Muslims everywhere. The word mission was historically often applied to the building, the mission station, in which the missionary lives or works. In some colonies, these mission stations became a focus of settlement of displaced or formerly nomadic people. Particularly in rural Australia, missions have become localities or ghettos on the edges of towns which are home to many indigenous Australians. The word may be seen as derogatory when used in this context. Additional events can be found at the timeline of Christian missions. Topic. Contemporary concepts of mission Topic. Topic. Sending and receiving nations Topic. Major nations not only send and fund missionaries abroad, but also receive them from other countries. In 2010, the United States sent out 127,000 missionaries, while 32,400 came to the United States. Brazil was second, sending out 34,000, and receiving 20,000. France sent out 21,000 and received 10,000. Britain sent out 15,000 and received 10,000. India sent out 10,000 and received 8,000. Other major exporters included Spain at 21,000 sent out, Italy at 20,000, South Korea at 20,000, Germany at 14,000, and Canada at 8,500. Large recipient nations included Russia, receiving 20,000, Congo receiving 15,000, South Africa, 12,000, Argentina, 10,000, and Chile, 8,500. The largest sending agency in the United States was the Southern Baptist Convention, with 4,800 missionaries, plus 450 support staff working inside the United States. The annual budget is about $50,000 per year per missionary. In recent years, however, the Southern Baptist Foreign Missionary Operation the International Mission Board has operated at a deficit, and it is cutting operations by 15%. It is encouraging older missionaries to retire and return to the United States. Topic. Modern missionary methods and doctrines among conservative Protestants Topic. The Lausanne Congress of 1974, birthed a movement that supports evangelical mission among non-Christians and nominal Christians. It regards mission as that which is designed. 
to form a viable indigenous church planting and world changing movement. This definition is motivated by a theological imperative theme of the Bible to make God known, as outlined in the Great Commission. The definition is claimed to summarize the acts of Jesus' ministry, which is taken as a model motivation for all ministries. This Christian missionary movement seeks to implement churches after the pattern of the first century apostles. The process of forming disciples is necessarily social. Church should be understood in the widest sense, as a body of believers of Christ rather than simply a building. In this view, even those who are already culturally Christian must be evangelized. Church planting by cross-cultural missionaries leads to the establishment of self-governing, self-supporting and self-propagating communities of believers. This is the famous three-self formula formulated by Henry Venn of the London Church Missionary Society in the 19th century. Cross-cultural missionaries are persons who accept church planting duties to evangelize people outside their culture, as Christ commanded in the Great Commission Matthew chapter 28 verses 18 to 20, Mark chapter 16 verses 15 to 18. The objective of these missionaries is to give an understandable presentation of their beliefs with the hope that people will choose to following the teaching of Jesus Christ and live their lives as his disciples. As a matter of strategy, many evangelical Christians around the world now focus on what they call the 1040ths window, a band of countries between 10 and 40 degrees north latitude and reaching from Western Africa through Asia. Christian mission strategist Luis Bush pinpointed the need for a major focus of evangelism in the 1040ths window, a phrase he coined in his presentation at the Missionary Conference Lausanne 1989 in Manila. Sometimes referred to as the resistant belt. It is an area that includes 35% of the world's land mass, 90% of the world's poorest peoples and 95% of those who have yet to hear anything about Christianity. Modern pioneering missionary doctrines now focus on inserting a culturally adapted seed of Christian doctrines into a self-selected, self-motivated group of indigenous believers, without removing them from their culture in any way. Modern mission techniques are sufficiently refined that within 10 to 15 years, most indigenous churches are locally pastored, managed, taught, self-supporting and evangelizing. The process can be substantially faster if a pre-existing translation of the Bible and higher pastoral education are already available, perhaps left over from earlier, less effective missions. One strategy is to let indigenous cultural groups decide to adopt Christian doctrines and benefits, when as in most cultures, such major decisions are normally made by groups. In this way, opinion leaders in the groups can persuade much or most of the groups to convert. When combined with training in discipleship, church planting and other modern missionary doctrine, the result is an accelerating, self-propelled conversion of large portions of the culture. A typical modern mission is a cooperative effort by many different ministries, often including several coordinating ministries, such as the Faith to Share Network, often with separate funding sources. One typical effort proceeded as follows. A missionary radio group recruits, trains and broadcasts in the main dialect of the target culture's language. Broadcast content is carefully adapted to avoid syncretism yet help the Christian gospel seem like a native, normal part of the target culture. Broadcast content often includes news, music, entertainment and education in the language, as well as purely Christian items. Broadcasts might advertise programs, inexpensive radios possibly spring wound, and a literature ministry that sells a Christian mail-order correspondence course at nominal costs. The literature ministry is key, and is normally a separate organization from the radio ministry. Modern literature missions are shifting to web-based content where it makes sense as in Western Europe and Japan. When a person or group completes a correspondence course, they are invited to contact a church planting missionary group from if possible a related cultural group. The church planting ministry is usually a different ministry from either the literature or radio ministries. The church planting ministry usually requires its missionaries to be fluent in the target language and trained in modern church planting techniques. The missionary then leads the group to start a church. Churches planted by these groups are usually a group that meets in a house. The object is the minimum organization that can perform the required character development and spiritual growth. Buildings, complex ministries and other expensive items are mentioned, but deprecated until the group naturally achieves the size and budget to afford them. 
The crucial training is how to become a Christian by faith in Jesus Christ and then how to set up a church meet to study the Bible, and perform communion and worship, usually in that order. A new generation of churches is created, and the growth begins to accelerate geometrically. Frequently, daughter churches are created only a few months after a church's creation. In the fastest-growing Christian movements, the pastoral education is pipelined, flowing in a just-in-time fashion from the central churches to daughter churches. That is, planting of churches does not wait for the complete training of pastors. The most crucial part of church planting is selection and training of leadership. Classically, leadership training required an expensive stay at a seminary, a Bible college. Modern church planters deprecate this because it substantially slows the growth of the church without much immediate benefit. Modern mission doctrines replace the seminary with programmed curricula or even less expensive books of discussion questions, and access to real theological books. The materials are usually made available in a major trading language in which most native leaders are likely to be fluent. In some cases, the materials can be adapted for oral use. It turns out that new pastors Practical needs for theology are well addressed by a combination of practical procedures for church planting, discussion in small groups, and motivated Bible-based study from diverse theological texts. As a culture's church's wealth increases, it will naturally form classic seminaries on its own. Another related mission is Bible translation. The above-mentioned literature has to be translated. Missionaries actively experiment with advanced linguistic techniques to speed translation and literacy. Bible translation not only speeds a church's growth by aiding self-training, but it also assures that Christian information becomes a permanent part of the native culture and literature. Some ministries also use modern recording techniques to reach groups with audio that could not be soon reached with literature. Topic. Among Roman Catholics. Topic. For Catholics, missions is the term given to those particular undertakings by which the heralds of the gospel, sent out by the church and going forth into the whole world, carry out the task of preaching the gospel and planting the church among peoples or groups who do not yet believe in Christ. Vatican II made a deep impact on Catholic missions around the world. The church's relations to non-Christian religions like Judaism and Islam were revisited. A steep decline in the number of people entering the priesthood and religious life in the West has made the Church look towards laity more and more. Communities like Opus Dei arose to meet this need. Enculturation increasingly became a key topic of missiological reflection for Catholics. Enculturation is understood as the meeting of the Christian message with a community in their cultural context. Liberation theology and liturgical reform have also been important in forming and influencing the mission of the Catholic Church in the 20th and 21st centuries. In relation to mission, Pope Benedict XVI has made the re-evangelization of Europe and North America a priority in his own ministry, even while the upper leadership of the Roman Catholic hierarchy and the College of Cardinals has more members from Latin America, Africa, and Asia than ever before. Key documents on mission for Catholics during this period are Evangeli Nuntiandi by Pope Paul VI and Redemptoris Missio by Pope John Paul II. Topic: Publishing of books as mission. Topic. Christian mission organizations have long depended on the printed word as a channel through which to do mission. At times when countries have been closed to Christians, great efforts have been made to smuggle Bibles and other literature into those countries. Brother Andrew, the founder of Open Doors, started smuggling Bibles into communist countries in the 1950s. Operation Mobilization was established in 1957 by George Verwer. Other Christian publishers, such as Plough Publishing, provide free books to people in the UK and US as a form of mission. The Bible Society translates and prints Bibles, in an attempt to reach every country in the world. Criticism Westernization Topic. Objections to missionary work among isolated, indigenous populations involve the claim that the goal of mission is to westernize them. Such claims have been raised by indigenous rights groups organizations, such as Friends of Peoples Close to Nature and Survival International. 
Topic: Communicating diseases. Topic: Missionaries, along with other travelers, brought diseases into local populations. Smallpox, measles, even the common cold, have been blamed on their arrivals. David Igler of the University of California, Irvine, includes missionary activity as a cause of spreading germs. However, he says that commercial traders were the main agents of disease. Other diseases arrived on noncommercial voyages, missionary activities certainly spread germs, and Spanish conquests had dispersed deadly germs in parts of the Americas and Pacific prior to the late 18th century. Yet, for the period between the 1770s and the 1840s, trading vessels were the main agents of disease, creating in the Pacific what Emmanuel Leroy Ladurie Le has called a «paroxysm» of the «microbian unification of the world». By 1850, the microbes of Europe, Asia, and Africa circulated in almost every Pacific population. Topic. Statistical patterns Topic. Political scientist Robert Woodbury uses statistics to argue that conversionary Protestants were a crucial catalyst in spreading religious liberty, education, and democracy. He shows that statistically the prevalence of such missionaries account for half of the variance in democracy in Africa, Asia, Latin America and Oceania. In a 2014 Christianity Today article, he remarks. Areas where Protestant missionaries had a significant presence in the past are on average more economically developed today, with comparatively better health, lower infant mortality, lower corruption, greater literacy, higher educational attainment especially for women, and more robust membership in nongovernmental associations. <laughs> Controversy and Christian missionaries Topic. In India, Hindu organizations such as the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh assert that most conversions undertaken by zealous evangelicals occur due to compulsion, inducement or fraud. In the Indian state of Tripura, the government has alleged financial and weapons smuggling connections between Baptist missionaries and rebel groups such as the National Liberation Front of Tripura. The accused Tripura Baptist Christian Union is a member body of the Baptist World Alliance. In mid-May, the Vatican was also co-sponsoring a meeting about how some religious groups abuse liberties by proselytizing, or by evangelizing in aggressive or deceptive ways. Iraq has become an open field for foreigners looking for fresh converts. Some Catholic Church leaders and aid organizations have expressed concern about new Christian groups coming in and luring Iraqis to their churches with offers of cash, clothing, food or jobs. Reports of aggressive proselytism and reportedly forced conversions in mostly Hindu India have fueled religious tensions and violence there and have prompted some regional governments to pass laws banning proselytism or religious conversion. Sadvi Vrnda Chaitanya, a Hindu monk from southern India, told CNS that India's poor and uneducated are especially vulnerable to coercive or deceptive methods of evangelization. Aid work must not hide any ulterior motives and avoid exploiting vulnerable people like children and the disabled, she said. In an interview with Outlook magazine, Sadvi Vrnda Chaitanya said. If the Vatican could understand that every religious and spiritual tradition is as sacred as Christianity, and that they have a right to exist without being denigrated or extinguished, it will greatly serve the interests of dialogue, mutual respect, and peaceful coexistence. <laughs> Aid and evangelism while there is a general agreement among most major aid organizations not to mix aid with proselyting, others see disasters as a useful opportunity to spread the word. One such an occurrence was the tsunami that devastated parts of Asia on December 26, 2004. This disaster is one of the greatest opportunities God has given us to share his love with people, said K.P. Yohannan, president of the Texas-based Gospel for Asia. In an interview, Yohannan said his 14,500 native missionaries in India, Sri Lanka and the Andaman Islands are giving survivors Bibles and booklets about 
How to find hope in this time through the Word of God. In Krabi, Thailand, a Southern Baptist church had been praying for a way to make inroads with a particular ethnic group of fishermen, according to Southern Baptist Relief Coordinator Pat Julian. Then came the tsunami, a phenomenal opportunity to provide ministry and care, Julian told the Baptist Press News Service. Not all evangelicals agree with these tactics. It's not appropriate in a crisis like this to take advantage of people who are hurting and suffering, said the Rev. Franklin Graham, head of Samaritan's Purse and son of evangelist Billy Graham. The Christian Science Monitor echoes these concerns. Quote, single quote. I think evangelists do this out of the best intentions, but there is a responsibility to try to understand other faith groups and their culture, says Vince Isner, director of FaithfulAmerica.org, a program of the National Council of Churches USA. The Bush administration has made it easier for U.S. faith-based groups and missionary societies to tie aid and church together. For decades, U.S. policy has sought to avoid intermingling government programs and religious proselytizing. The aim is both to abide by the Constitution's prohibition against a state religion and to ensure that aid recipients don't forego assistance because they don't share the religion of the provider. But many of those restrictions were removed by Bush in a little-noticed series of executive orders, a policy change that cleared the way for religious groups to obtain hundreds of millions of dollars in additional government funding. It also helped change the message American aid workers bring to many corners of the world, from emphasizing religious neutrality to touting the healing powers of the Christian God. Topic Christian counterclaims Topic Missionaries say that the government in India has passed anti-conversion laws in several states that are supposedly meant to prevent conversions from force or allurement, but are primarily used, they say, to persecute and criminalize voluntary conversion due to the government's broad definition of force and allurement. Any gift received from a Christian in exchange for, or with the intention of, conversion is considered allurement. Voice of the Martyrs reports that aid workers claim that they are being hindered from reaching people with much needed services as a result of this persecution. Alan Delastic, Roman Catholic Archbishop of New Delhi, states that claims of forced conversion are false. There are attacks practically every week, maybe not resulting in death, but still, violent attacks. Richard Howell, General Secretary of the Evangelical Fellowship of India, tells the Christian Science Monitor today. They India's controlling BJP party have created an atmosphere where minorities do feel insecure, according to Prakash Lewis, director of the Secular Indian Social Institute in New Delhi. We are seeing a broad attempt to stifle religious minorities and their constitutional rights. Today, they say you have no right to convert, tomorrow you have no right to worship in certain places. Existing congregations, often during times of worship, are being persecuted. Properties are sometimes destroyed and burnt to the ground, while native pastors are sometimes beaten and left for dead. Topic see also topic topic References topic topic Further reading topic Anderson, Gerald H., ed., Biographical Dictionary of Christian Missions, Simon & Schuster Macmillan, 1998 Arles, Siga. Theological Education for the Mission of the Church in India, 1947-1987, New York, Peter Lang, 1992. Bainbridge, William F. Around the World Tour of Christian Missions, A Universal Survey 1882-583 pages, full text online Barnes, Jonathan S. Power and Partnership, A History of the Protestant Mission Movement WIPF and Stock Publishers, 2013 Barrett, David, ed. World Christian Encyclopedia, Oxford University Press, 1982 Best, Jeremy. Godly, International, and Independent, German Protestant Missionary Loyalties Before World War I Central European History 2014-47 No. 3 pp. 585-611. Bevins, Stephen B. A Century of Catholic Mission 2013 excerpt, wide-ranging survey focused on 20th century worldwide. The Catholic Encyclopedia, 1913 Natingius, Hans. Bishops and Societies, A Study of Anglican Colonial and Missionary Expansion, 1698-1850 Dries, Angeline. The Missionary Movement in American Catholic History Marinol, N.Y., Orbis Books, 1998 Endress, David J. American Crusade, Catholic Youth in the World Mission Movement from World War I through Vatican II 2010. Etherington, Norman, ed. 
Missions and Empire Oxford History of the British Empire Companion Series 2008 Fitzpatrick Barons, Susan the Marinol Catholic Mission in Peru, 1943 to 1989: Transnational Faith and Transformation, 2012. Gailey, Charles R. and Howard Culbertson. Discovering Missions. Beacon Hill Press of Kansas City, 2007. Glazier, Michael and Monica K. Helwig, eds. The Modern Catholic Encyclopedia, Liturgical Press, 2004. Glover, Robert H. The Progress of Worldwide Missions, Rev., by J. Herbert Kane, Harper and Rowe, 1960 Graham, Gale. Gender, Culture, and Christianity, American Protestant Mission Schools in China, 1880–1930 Lang, 1995. Herzog, Johann Jakob, Philip Schaff, and Albert Hock. The New Schaff Herzog Encyclopedia of Religious Knowledge, 12 volumes, Funk and Wagnalls Company, 1910-11 Hollinger, David A. Protestants Abroad, How Missionaries Tried to Change the World but Changed America 2017 excerpt Huntley, Martha. Caring, Growing, Changing, A History of the Protestant Mission in Korea Friendship Press, 1984 Hutchison, William R. 1993. Aaron to the World, American Protestant Thought and Foreign Missions. University of Chicago Press. Kane, J. Herbert. A Concise History of the Christian World Mission, Baker, 1982 Lauderette, Kenneth Scott. A History of the Expansion of Christianity, 7 Volumes, 1938-45, The Most Detailed Scholarly History McCullough, Diarmaid. Christianity, The First Three Thousand Years 2009. Moreau, A. Scott, David Burnett, Charles Edward Van Ingen and Harold A. Netland. Evangelical Dictionary of World Missions, Baker Book House Company, 2000 Neil, Stephen. A History of Christian Missions. Penguin Books, 1986 Newcomb, Harvey. A Cyclopedia of Missions, containing a comprehensive view of missionary operations throughout the world, with geographical descriptions, and accounts of the social, moral, and religious condition of the people 1860-792 pages complete text online Pocock, Michael, Galen Van Reenen, Douglas McConnell. The Changing Face of World Missions, Engaging Contemporary Issues and Trends 2005, 391 pages Ragsdale, John P. Protestant Mission Education in Zambia, 1880 to 1954, Susquehanna University Press, 1986. Robert, Dana L. Christian Mission: How Christianity Became a World Religion, 2009, 226 pp. Short survey. Stanley, Brian. The Bible and the Flag: Protestant Mission and British Imperialism in the 19th and 20th Centuries, 1990. Stanley, Brian. The Global Diffusion of Evangelicalism, The Age of Billy Graham and John Stott 2013. Tegerian, Eleanor H., and Reva Specter simon eds. Conflict, Conquest, and Conversion, 2000 Years of Christian Missions in the Middle East Columbia University Press, 2012 280 pages, focus on the 19th and 20th centuries. Tyrell, Ian. Reforming the World, The Creation of America's Moral Empire 2010 excerpt and text search Tucker, Ruth. From Jerusalem to Irian Jaya, From Jerusalem to Irian Jaya, A Biographical History of Christian Missions 2nd ed. 2004 excerpt and text search Yates, Timothy. The Conversion of the Maori, Years of Religious and Social Change, 1814-1842 Zupanov, Ines G. 2005. Missionary Tropics, The Catholic Frontier in India 16th-17th centuries. University of Michigan. ISBN 0-472-11490-5. Journal Social Sciences and Missions Leiden, Brill, 1995. Positive or Neutral Gailey and Culbertson. Discovering Missions by ISBN 0-8341-2257-X. Johnston Operation World ISBN 1-85078-357-8. Moreau, Corwin and McGree. Introducing World Missions ISBN 0-8010-2648-2 Olson, C. Gordon. What in the World is God Doing? Global Gospel Publishers, 2003 Parker, J. Fred. 
Mission to the World. Nazarene Publishing House, 1988. Van Rien and Missions by ISBN 0 310 20809 2. Winter and Hawthorne, eds. Perspectives on the World Christian Movement, ISBN 0 87808 289 1. Critical. Vindicated by Time, the Nyoga Committee Report on Christian Missionary Activities in Madhya Pradesh, India. History of Hindu Christian Encounters 304 AD to 1996. By Sita Ram Goel, Publisher, Voice of India, New Delhi Shori, A. 1994. Missionaries in India, Continuities, Changes, Dilemmas. New Delhi, ASA Publications. Missionary Conquest, The Gospel and Native American Cultural Genocide by George E. Tinker ISBN 978-0-8006-2576-4. The Missionaries, God Against the Indians by Norman Lewis ISBN 0-14-013175-2. The Dark Side of Christian History by Helen Ellerb ISBN 0-9644873-4-9. Goal, S.R. History of Hindu-Christian Encounters, A.D. 304-1996. ISBN 8185990352 Bell, Ron M. 1922 Mission Sexperten und der Vatikan 1922-1939 in, Romisch Historische Mitteilungen 54, 2012, 583-610. External links Faith to Share, Missions Network Missionary Organizations, Missionary Organizations Directory Missiology.org, Resources on Missions Christian Education. LFM. Social Sciences and Missions Academic Journal.